up to this point, you know, we would, um, we're, we're seeing patients who have discomfort, who have problems with ocular surface disease secondary to demodex blepharitis. Um, until recently, you know, our treatment options have been limited. So I, I would put patients on uh, uh, tea tree oil based uh, wipes and have patients do this two or three times a day, basically indefinitely, just to keep their mite load at bay. Um, what I found was that the compliance was very, very poor, very difficult for patients to continue that treatment and not very effective. So we might have gotten a little bit of a decrease on the mite count, but it really never um, went away to a meaningful amount. Um, what other treatment options were you using, Eric, in your treatment of these patients? Well, I agree with you completely, Marjan. Tea tree oil was kind of the standard that we used when we didn't have anything that was FDA approved. And um, it was toxic and irritating, and you had to get to a certain concentration. We used ivernectin as well. Uh, I used uh, blepharo exfoliation to remove them as well. And some people were using these medications orally as well as topically. Um I don't think that any of them were really all that satisfactory in, in managing this disease. And now that we have an FDA approved product, not only do we have the knowledge that it's FDA approved, but just it's extraordinarily more effective than anything we've had in the past. So sometimes you have an FDA approved product, but it's not really better than what we used previously. Now we can really say that the use of Lodaliner is dramatically better than any product that we've had in the past, and it's really separated this therapy to the point where I don't even think about using anything else other than Lodolander, and the trade name, as you all know, is Xdemvi. So uh, this has become my go-to therapy, and I haven't used anything else but this. And uh, what's remarkable to me is how effective this therapy has been, especially when I compare it to some of the therapies that I used in the past. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to... Um, jump to Derek, actually. Derek, you're working in an office. Are you seeing these patients come in from your perspective? Because you're probably dealing with these patients before they get to um, see, you know, the eye care professional. What what are you hearing from patients in terms of the journey they've had to go through in their diagnosis and in their treatment? Well, I think more recently, it's been a little easier when we hear uh, the symptoms the patient has or the complaints they have, because we know there's an actual treatment for it. Uh, many times the chief complaint is initially considered to be an ocular surface disease where, uh, you know, they've used the tea tree oil wipes, they've used the artificial tears, they've done the warm compresses, they've done the, the Johnson's baby shampoo, they've done everything at this point, but their complaints don't seem to go away. Um, but now that we have XDMV, it's been a little different because we know there's another option for them that's been very successful. Completely. Yeah, yeah Marjan, I'll, I'll yeah. follow up with that and, and, and say that the most common complaint that I see from patients coming in who have florid demodex blepharitis are symptomatic, they are um, depressed, they've had, they have a chronic disease, is that they've never been diagnosed with the disease. They've been diagnosed as having some other disease and they've been treated with therapies that just haven't worked. Uh, now that we're looking for this organism, we find that the patients are responding extraordinarily well. And it's one of the most amazing processes that we've all seen is that so many of these patients are coming in and they are just so thankful that we finally found a therapy that works for a disease that they thought they were going to have to live with for decades. Yeah, and I might add a little too, I'll have a moment. You know, I, I, I thought those were great comments on all the things being utilized from baby shampoo, et cetera. You know, we, um, I mean, we've done every extreme and, and while things like blepharo exfoliation do help, yeah, keep in mind, that's like, um, your analogy is, is like removing the sawdust, but not killing the termites. You know, it, it's helpful. You want to get rid of everything that's there in the debris, but you really have to also eradicate what's taking place. And so maybe in combination that makes a role, but I agree with Eric and, and Derek that, you know, it has just been so effective, so straightforward twice a day for six weeks. And we were using IPL as well in the past with um, fairly good efficacy, but we did a couple things wrong. Number one, we would do a treatment a week apart. And I guess we weren't getting the eggs or the nits because it always seemed to come back, the Demodex that is. Uh, or And it was costly. It was a very costly option compared to a therapeutic now. 
um, that we have that does a much better job, as Eric described, when it comes to Demodex management. Yeah, no, that's completely. And and actually, I was going to jump to you, Paul, in terms of, you know, in an optometry setting, um, how often is it impacting uh, patients who are, you know, contact lens wearers who are, you know, in this population of patients, uh, patients who, ha who can't wear their contact lenses anymore? And what is the process they have to go through to get diagnosed? Are they getting diagnosed? And then are you able to get proper treatment to them? Well, my clinic is 100% referral, so I, I have a very advanced ocular service disease clinic, but I can comment on this because they're referred from colleagues and, mm -hmm. and ophthalmology colleagues as well, but a lot are from optometry colleagues or rheumatologists or others, and, and although rheumatology is usually sending Sjogren's, not Demodex, mm -hmm. the optometry colleagues of mine are sending a, a fair amount of these patients over, and it's fascinating because for years, these patients would come in with a dry eye diagnosis or contact lens intolerant, and I was surprised how often we saw demodex blepharitis, to your point. Now, fast forward to today, and, and credit to, um, you know, educators and to the company. You know, I think uh, most of my colleagues are coming up with the diagnosis. They're having patients look down. They're picking up on it. Um, they're recognizing what the diagnosis is. Uh, some are making the treatment ahead of time. Um, but I, I st still think we're all fascinated by the prevalence. Uh, you know, in a contact lens population with the Titan study, you know, it could be as much as 50% of the patients. And I believe that if you took contact lens intolerant patients, that number is going to be far higher of a percentage. It may well be one of the most common causes of contact lens intolerance, uh, but we'll have to study that for verification. So, uh, yes, I think that's a common patient population who are having trouble maintaining their contact lens wear, and doctors are starting to pick up now on Demodex. And the nice thing about a BID drop or twice a day for six weeks is you could use that with contact lenses before and after. Uh, most patients put their lens in, you know, 15 minutes later, take the lens out in the evening, put the second drop in. So they're able to have a nice uh, effective treatment even while they're maintaining their contact lenses. So, uh, yes, I think it's a major factor in, in the general patient population. And optometry, you know, is seeing over 80% of the, of the primary eye care visits. So they should be seeing... 40 to 50%, somewhere around 40% of these patients should have, you know, Demodex or as the Titan study said, you know, 58%. But if they're seeing 80% of it, it should be about 40 out of 80 patients. And that is a, a, a large population of the general. And I think that's important because while we might expect it in rosacea, we might expect it in dry eye patients. This is general patients coming in for cataract valves, glaucoma, dry eye, contact lens wear, spectacles. And that's the major point. It's prevalent in all those populations. Hey, Marjan, can I jump in really quick and yes, ask Paul please. a question? Absolutely. So again, just from a payer perspective, I, I know, again, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but would you say that this is a specialty disease state? So you're saying you get a lot of referrals from, I'm assuming, primary care or optometrists or something like that. Is or So is this something that should be treated at that level, or is this something that can be diagnosed and treated more at the primary care level? A really good question, Jeff, and really important. This is a primary care level treatment. I think my clinic is obviously very secondary uh, care because of the referrals. Patients 100% have to be referred in. I have over 600 positive diagnosed Sjogren's syndrome patients. So just trying to put it in perspective of the type of patients that are referred in, uh, a large percentage of ocular graft versus host disease. So I think the you can have a secondary care cornea ocular surface disease practice, um, which you know I do, Eric, Marcia, and a lot of us do. Um, in that area uh, as well. But I do think when it comes to just Demodex, um, for years, those were the patients that were referred into referral clinics because the diagnosis wasn't made. They, they thought it was dry eye. And so they showed up. But today with a first line therapy, I really expect this to be treated at the primary eye care level. But you know, I'll go even further and, and make the statement that Demodex blepharitis is the single most common uh, medical problem that presents to optometrists and ophthalmologists office. So this is the number one reason why patients are coming to our offices. They just haven't been diagnosed in the past with better education and with seminars such as this. I think our colleagues will be diagnosed in this routinely. And uh, it, it, it's extraordinarily important. Um, I've said this before to Marjan, but one of my favorite sayings is by Mark Twain. And that was that it's not what we don't know that gets us in trouble. It's what we know for certain, but we're wrong about that gets us in trouble. And that's the story about Demodex blepharitis. We didn't know 
the pathophysiology of Demodex and how significant it was. And we didn't know how common it was because we weren't looking for it. Yes. Now that we look for it, it's been hiding in plain sight. It's been there all along. We've missed it. And I believe that Demodex blepharitis is the missing link in the management of ocular surface disease. Mm -hmm.